Okay, I'm going to look at installing Chef Server and a client machine. Chef Server is a very valuable configuration management tool and setup is a little bit confusing, so let's get right into it. So I have a server right here and this server, server.example.com, is ready to be installed as a server. I also have client.example.com and those are going to be my two machines. So first I want to get the wget command. So I will um, do a yum -y install wget. Wget is useful for downloading packages. It's a great, great product to have, a great package to have. So here we go. Now I want to download the RPM package. So you do a wget and you want to do https. You can go search the um, Chef website for the one you want. They usually require you to authenticate in order to get the package, or actually maybe just give your information. Stable L7 Chef Server Core 12 17 5 dash one dot e l seven it's a long name isn't it dot x eighty six underscore sixty four dot rpm and if I type that correctly it should download the package and it looks like I got it correct which is good okay now I install the RPM package, you can RPM minus IVH and the package I just downloaded right there. And this takes a moment. And then once you have the package installed, you can go ahead and start configuring it. Meanwhile, I want to get started on my client machine. So the client workstation, I need the same package. So do a yum minus y install wget get and once I have wget then I can use wget to download the client portion of this chef configuration management stuff so wget and https slash slash packages dot chef dot io slash files stable this is chef bk for the development kit 2.4.17 slash gl slash 7 c chef bk dash 2.4.17 dash 1 dot gl 7 dot x 86 underscore 64 dot rpm and it looks like I got that one correct as well right, rpm minus ivh and then the package c press tab and install it okay now I'll go back to my server server done installing um, one of the things you're going to need for Chef to work properly is the firewall open. So I'm using CentOS 7 and I'm going to open the firewall with firewall dash cmd dash as permanent dash as add service HTTP and I want HTTPS as well. Most of it's going to be running on HTTPS, but you want the HTTP in case people are directed or go there the wrong place. And anyway, I got firewall cmd dash dash reload to load the configurations from their permanent settings into the active firewall. And then I'm ready to go. Now, the first thing you do once you have your chef package installed is you want to run the reconfigure command. So you type chef dash server dash ctl and reconfigure and this command runs for about 
four or five minutes. It's really quite a long command. So I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time there. Um, so I will just skip ahead. All right, magically, magically, we've just finished reconfiguring. It only took us five minutes and 41 seconds. Now, the next step is to check to make sure it's working. So we do a chef server CTL status, and it looks looks good. Everything's responding. It looks like it's up and ready to go. All right. In order to configure Chef much further, it's good to have a user, uh, an administrative user. So we'll do a Chef, Chef Server CTL, and we're going to create a user. So user create, and we'll call this one the username admin, and um, let's have a first name, first name, and last name. Obviously, you wouldn't use first name and last name. You just have somebody in some email address. You admin at server.example.com. And the password we're going to use is aloha, aloha, one, two, three, my super secret password. And we're going to create a file in the etc chef and we'll directory we'll call it admin dot hem so that generates our admin dot pem file now in order to really do this well it's good to have a management console up so we're going to run some nice long commands again chef server cdl install chef Manage. All right, fire this one off. And after just over a minute, it finishes up and it's time to reconfigure the whole chef thing again. So do chef server CTL reconfigure. This will probably take about two minutes. So we'll skip ahead there. All right, it's now finished reconfiguring. It's time to set up the management portion. So do chef manage CTL reconfigure. This one wants you to accept a license. And so we'll just accept the license right here. If I can spell license correctly. All right, there we go. All right, once this is done, we have a choice now. Um, we can either create our organization from the command line or we can go to the web browser and, and create it there. But let's go ahead and do it from the command line just for, for fun. And then after that, later when we're on the client, we can see what the management interface looks like. So I'll do a chef uh, server, oops server ctl org create and we'll call my organization this example.com so let's do example dash com doesn't like dots and first name let's call it example incorporated and we will have our association user Set to admin, and we're going to create our file in the etc chef directory, and we will call it example dash com dash validator dot m. All right, if I type that correctly, it should generate our pem file and do some other things. And then at this point, we are pretty much done configuring the server. It's time to jump back to the workstation and do some more configurations. So here we are 
as you remember, we had just barely installed the package. Um, it looks like it's installed. Let's just do a quick little check. So chef client minus V to check the version number of the client. And see if this works. And it looks like we have a client installed. Now we want to get the web browser up and we want to browse over to the server. So my server is at server.example.com. And at this point, you might want to make sure that you have all of your host names correctly configured. Either you have DNS or you have the host file. Either way, you want to have something. All right, I understand the risks of going to this insecure site. I'll add the exception. Yeah, confirm security exception. And then I go to the site. And if we remember, my username was admin and my password was aloha123. I'll sign in. Now over the in the administration tab, there is an organization I created, example-com. I click on that and you can see there's this starter kit. So I click on the starter kit and I want to download the starter kit. This will give me my basic files I need. And I want to proceed and yes, it'll reset keys. I get that. And I'll save that file. It'll probably save it to my downloads directory. Since I am logged in as root, um, it'll save it to the root downloads directory. At this point, I'm, I'm pretty much done using this. So I can close my browser and take a look. So I can see there is a downloads directory, downloads, and there is a chef starter right there. So I want to unzip that, unzip. Now I'm, I'm currently in my root directory and that's where you want to be. So if you're not in your root directory and you're logged into root, you can just have a CD to jump to it. Anyway, you want to be in your root directory and then you do unzip and capital D for downloads. And it is the chef starter.zip file. I load unzip that and it creates this directory called chef dash repo. Now, strangely enough, a lot of the things we need are in this dot chef directory inside of chef repo. And it wants it to be at the root. It wants the dot chef directory to be at the root of my system here. So I am going to just go ahead and create a symbolic link to make it look like it's there. So I do ln minus s and let's see with the root directory chef repo. And I want the dot chef directory to be linked to just root dot chef. All right. So now I take a look at my directory. I can see that there is a dot chef symbolic link that will go into my well, my dot chef directory inside of the chef repo, which will make everything work a little better. So it's kind of nice to do that. The other thing we want to look at is um, chef uses Ruby for all this stuff. And if I type in which Ruby, you'll discover that the GNOME desktop does not come with Ruby installed by default, which is fine because I don't need it. So I am going to go ahead and use the one that's embedded. And the one that's embedded is stored somewhere in the opt directory. So if I look in the, uh, the opt and there's a chef DK for development kit and embedded. And then there is a bin directory there. So you can see that this bin directory has a bunch of binary files and one of them happens to be Ruby. So I want to add that Ruby stuff to my path. And I use the nano browser um, to edit the dot bash underscore profile file. And so I want to go edit this path and put a colon here. And then the directory was, if we remember correctly, it was opt chef dk slash embedded slash bin. So add that to the path. And um, I also want to, 
um, make sure my editor is set correctly. Now, I don't know which editor you prefer. I prefer demonstrating with Nano. I use Emacs normally, but USR in Nano. And so I export both the path and the editor so they're available. Exit out of there. The next time I log in, these things will be active, or I can just type in the bash command right now. And I can type in uh, echo editor, and you can see that my um, hmm. no. Okay, let's see. Maybe I'll just log out and log back in again because I would prefer it to be there. So I'll log out and uh, log out. All right, log in again as root, not listed, and as root, root password. Log back in again, bring up my terminal. Terminal. Zoom in a few times, make it nice and easy to see. And now see if my path is set correctly. Echo path. Now it's set correctly. And my Editor is also set correctly. Just make sure that that is the correct directory and it is the correct directory. Good. So we're ready to go. All right. So I have that edited. It's ready to go. Now I want to figure out what clients are available. So I do knife client list and it should report that there is nothing really working correctly. And that's basically what it says. It says that I have trouble because I don't have a SSL certificate installed. But I want to fetch that SSL certificate. So I do knife SSL fetch. And at this point, it will go and it will grab the SSL certificate and it will put it in the directory. This is my dot chef trusted certs directory there. And then it'll be ready to ready to go. And how do I verify it? Well, I run the same command I ran earlier, the knife client list. And now the certificate should be installed. And it says that the example com validator is the, well, it's, it's in this list here. All right. So now I want to install this client, turn it into a node. So I do knife boot strap. And I'm going to use my machine client dot example dot com and I'm going to call the node client. That's probably a bad name, but okay, I'll just call it client. And then it's going to go through and set up. Well, it has to copy things over so let's put the root password in and set everything up. So here we go. All right, that was a little bit faster than I remember it being. All right, now I want to go into the chef directory. So remember I'm in the root directory and there's a chef directory or chef repo, repo directory. So do chef, let's call chef correctly, chef repo. And you can take a look around and you can see there are a bunch of directories inside of this. I want to create a new cookbook. So that's what chef uses to send resources out. I'm going to create a new cookbook. And um, I like installing nmap on all my machines so i'm going to install the nmap well make sure i have a repo that would create nmap in it or a, a cookbook that would create nmap so do chef and generate cook book, book, cookbook and admin tools that's what i call it and it will create this new cookbook admin tools, actually creates a directory full of stuff in it. And it says, you got all this information here. That's great. 
you can see admin tools. Unfortunately, it's not inside of the cookbooks directory. So in order to make it work properly, I need to move it there. So move admin tools into the cookbooks. All right, now I'm gonna go into that directory. So I go into cookbooks, admin tools, and you can see inside of this, there are a bunch of directories and files. And I want to go in and edit the recipe, the default recipe. There's a default.rb file there, and I'm gonna edit that one with nano, default.rb. And I want it to install nmap. So I'll do package nmap do action install. And that's really about all I need to do. You can add other things in there, and there are a lot of examples on the web that show you what you can put into this file, but I thought I would show you right now. This is how you do it. All right, so now it's going to, by default, install the nmap package. If I type right now nmap, you can see that nmap is not installed, just so you can verify. So I'm going to do a, a knife. Load my A. So I upload all my cookbooks to the server. And so basically it sends the starter and the admin tools. So the admin tool is up there now. And I'm going to now add this cookbook, well, there's a recipe cookbook to my client node. So do knife node edit. And this is where the edit environmental variable is in the editor environmental variable is important and client because that's the name of my node and I edit this and it takes me to my editor where I can see information about my client and in this run list right here I can add something let's tab it in so I'll do a recipe I want my admin tools and that looks pretty so exit out of that and then I'm gonna go ahead and run it client chef client and if I did everything correctly it should install and map so I go ahead and run this and you can see that it has something to do with nmap happening right now. And then, it's done. So now I can try which nmap, and I can see that nmap is installed now. And that is how you set up your client machine um, that's how you set the server and you get it all communicating and you can even create a cookbook and use it to install something. So there you go, chef.